Do you know what the war is really about? The war is for your soul. Yes, the war is for your soul. My dear friend, this war is going on in the spiritual world, and it is very serious. You know know this spiritual war, because how serious it is. This This war is much more serious than any war that can take place in the physical world. Because this war ultimately determines the future of man, where will he be in eternity? Here on earth, you can find yourself in different situations, even some terrible circumstances. But if eternity is with God in heaven, then you can go through everything with God. With God, you can overcome everything. You've heard the story about how the first church, it was the first hundred years after the church was founded. The church was founded after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles remained. It was the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit descended and 150 people were in the house and the apostles and with them were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Believers. When Peter preached that day, 3,000 people repented and the Church of Jesus Christ was born. And this church grew every day. People became more and more. The Holy Spirit brought people. But after a short time, the Church of Jesus Christ saw terrible persecution, very terrible persecution. And people who believe in Jesus were outlawed. They were exactly what they were looking for, and if they managed to capture them, do you know what they did with them? There were were huge arenas back then, as we see in Italy. A huge Colosseum or similar or smaller arena. Just imagine, Christians were brought into such arenas, and then lions were released. Tigers and they tore, literally tore people apart. But do you know what history says? When they later looked at the torn corpses, there were smiles on their faces. And no one could understand how it was. How can they smile? And they say that the Holy Spirit was with them, that he helped them overcome everything. When Stephen was stoned, before he died, he looked at the sky and saw angels there, saw Jesus. His face lit up with a smile. He was happy. So, spiritual warfare, my friends, the devil fights and fights for your soul. He is ready to do anything to win your soul. How he he does it. Let's think together. How did the devil win the souls of people? Do you know who he is fighting with first of all? With believers. Do you know why? Because unbelievers are already in his power. He has already conquered them there.
and he starts a war for them only when God comes into the lives of these people and snatches them from the clutches of the devil. Only then does the devil raise all his hordes because a man escaped from his captivity. The devil sings with believers, how? The battle takes place in the human mind. This is the war that is invisible. We can only see its consequences. But the process of this war itself takes place in the human mind. It would seem that the mind is not complicated, it may seem. It seems that it is just the mind. Do you know where the mind is? The mind is the soul. The soul consists of reason, emotions, and will. How does the devil fight? It primarily attacks the human mind. What does he attack with? Thoughts. He attacks with thoughts. Its task is to send a person a thought of fear or doubt. The devil mainly uses two things to live, fear and doubt. And the devil begins to knock, as if he were hitting one point. A thought comes, this thought says, did God speak the truth? Remember? Remember how the serpent came to eat and said, but did God really say, don't eat? From the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will die. No, you won't die, said the snake. It was such a lie and today we are still getting paid for. This lie, because they lost then. But imagine, the devil sends these things, and do you know what his trick is? He hides himself, and if he managed to hide in such a way that a person would even think that there is no devil, then the devil has already won. Because his task is to make a person think that these are his thoughts. Because we have completely different attitudes towards the thought that is ours. And to the thought that comes from outside. The thought that is born in us. We understand that it is our thought. You need to do something with it. If a thought comes from outside, you can simply brush it aside. You know what they say, we can let the birds. Sir, circle above our heads, but we don't allow birds to build a nest on our heads. These are exactly the same thoughts. If you know that they are from outside, at least you know what to do with it. You can say, I refuse, I renounce these thoughts, I don't listen. The devil wants you to think that this is your thought, that in fact it is you who are afraid, that in fact it is you who doubt. And Imagine, it hits one point, fear, you're afraid of what will happen if I'm left without money tomorrow, and what will happen if tomorrow doesn't happen. As I expect, someone is afraid of the future. Some are afraid of the present, some are afraid of getting sick, some are afraid for their children, some are simply afraid. But if fear strikes a person, fear is Satan's most powerful weapon. 
мысль. Потому что fear comes into a person's life. When fear comes into your life, or you discover a fear in yourself that you have not yet dealt with, me too. Do everything to overcome this fear. My friends, I'm telling you very serious things now. You need to deal with fear. And the sooner you deal with it, the sooner you will see. Знаете, как говорят, мы можем позволить птицам кружиться над нашей головой. Victory in your life, because fear is anti-faith. Fear is an open door for the devil to come into your life. Fear is when you are afraid of something. Exactly what you fear befalls you. Можно сказать, Fear is Satan who has hidden himself, and through fear he invades a person's life, a person's thoughts. The first thing you must understand is that the thought is not yours. The thoughts with which the devil attacks you are thoughts from outside, they are not yours. So you don't have to think. What to do with them? You just need to say, the devil goes away, I throw these thoughts out of my head, these are not my thoughts, I refuse to think about it. If again this thought tries to creep in, you again say, the devil go away, I throw this thought out of my mind, and this is the war. And it would seem, well, you're just throwing out thoughts, but you know what happens when a person accepts a thought, a thought sent by the devil, oh you. You can't even imagine. Imagine, the thought of defeat, here it came, the devil fought his way, fought his way, fought his way and he succeeded and the man took this thought. And began to reflect on it. If a person thinks about one thought for some time, a short time, a day, two, three or a week, sooner or later, this thought will fall into your subconscious, and the subconscious is a unique thing, and the subconscious is no longer the soul, but it is your spirit. If any, thought, it falls into the subconscious, where it is accepted as truth. And so what happens next is that it starts to affect your emotions and feelings. At first it was just a thought and suddenly you discover that you feel bad at the level of feelings and emotions. This is defeat. Begins to attack you from all sides. You don't want anything. You're truly scared. You feel bad inside. And it does doesn't go away, you get worse, worse, and worse, and listen longer, and when this goes on and on and on, then it concerns the will of a person. Remember the soul is the mind, feelings, the will will of man, and the will of man is already giving up. And he says, yes, I'm amazed, and these are already certain actions. A person either leaves God or accepts such. Decisions after which it is very difficult to get out. And imagine this is a war that a person lost. And the devil fought for his soul and, imagine, he won. Victory. 
But you know, my friends, I'll tell you something now, if you firmly know, the devil will never gain victory in your life. Look, the devil is actually a defeated enemy. Say it loud, the devil is a defeated enemy. That, that is, in fact, it is not about who will win, God or devil. The devil is already defeated. And how can it affect a person's life? Only through deception, when a person begins to be afraid. To doubt that this is the basis for demonic deception to come and simply strike a person. But the devil really, imagine he is amazed. Because Jesus, he has achieved complete victory over the devil. What do we believers need to give on this earth in relation to the devil? In relation to this spiritual war, what should we, believers, do? First, we need to know that the devil is defeated, but he continues to send his thoughts. But if you know that he is amazed, if you know that these are not your thoughts, but his thoughts, it is easier for you to fight with a defeated enemy. And all you need as a believer is simply to maintain this state of the devil, stand firmly on the fact that he is amazed and just. Thank God for what he has done. Do you know what the war is really about? The war is for your soul. Yes, the war is for your soul. My dear friend, this war is going on in the spiritual world, and it is very serious. You know this spiritual war, because how serious it is. This war is much more serious than any war that can take place in the physical world. Because this war ultimately determines the future of man, where will he be in eternity? Here on earth, you can find yourself in different situations, even some terrible circumstances. But if it Eternity is with God in heaven, then you can go through everything. With God you can overcome everything. You've heard the story about how the first church, it was the first hundred years after the church was founded. The church was founded after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles remained. It was the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended and 150 people were in the house and the apostles and with them were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Believers. And when Peter preached that day, 3,000 people repented and the church of Jesus Christ was born. And this church grew every day, people became more and more. The Holy Spirit brought people. But after a short time, the Church of Jesus Christ saw terrible persecution, very terrible persecution. And people who believed in Jesus were outlawed. They were for exactly what they were looking for, and if they managed to capture them, do you know what they did with them? There were huge arenas back then, as we see in Italy, a huge coliseum or similar or smaller arena. Just imagine, Christians were brought into such arenas, and then lions were released. Tigers and they tore, literally tore people apart. 
But do you know what? Wird es dir leichter fallen, mit einem Feind zu kämpfen, der bereits verloren hat? History says, when they later looked at the torn corpses, there were smiles on their faces. And no one could understand how it was. How can they smile? And they say that the Holy Spirit was with them, that he helped them overcome everything. When Stephen was stoned, before he died, he looked at the sky and saw angels there, he saw Jesus. His face lit up with a smile. He was happy. So, spiritual warfare, my friends, the devil fights and fights for your soul. He is ready to do anything to win your soul. How he does it? Let's think together. How does the devil win the souls of people? Do you know who he is fighting with first of all? With believers. You know why? Because unbelievers are already in his power. He has already conquered them there. And he starts a war for them only when God comes into the lives of these people and snatches them from the clutches of the devil. Only then does the devil raise all his hordes because a man escaped from his captivity. The devil sings with believers how the battle takes place in the human mind. This is the war that is invisible. We can only see its consequences but the process of this war itself takes place in the human mind. It would seem that the mind is not complicated, it may seem. It seems that it is just the mind. Do you know where the mind is? The mind is the soul. The soul consists of reason, emotions, and will. How does the devil fight? It primarily attacks the human mind. What does he attack with? Thoughts. He attacks with thoughts. Its task is to send a person a thought of fear or doubt. The devil mainly uses two things to live, fear and doubt. And the devil begins to knock, as if he were hitting one point. A thought comes, this thought says, did God speak the truth? Remember how the serpent came to Eve and said, but did God really say? Das ist ein Dämon, der in dein Leben gekommen ist. Еще в утробе матери. Noch im Mutterleib. Что надо с этим делать? Und was Don't muss man eat. Tun? From the tree of the Что knowledge of good and evil, you will tun? die. Надо, no, you won't die, пришел. said the snake. It was Dieser such a lie, and today we are Dämon. still getting paid Dämon for. Benagen. This надо, lie, because, люди, because they lost hatte. then. But imagine, the devil sends these things, and do you know what his trick is? He hides himself, and if he managed to hide in such a way that a person would even think that there is no devil, then the devil has already won. Because his task is to make a person think that these are his thoughts. Because we have completely different attitudes towards the thought that is ours and to the thought that comes from outside. The thought that is born in us, we understand that it is our thought. 
Das ist dieselbe Antwort. Dieselbe Antwort. Deshalb möchte ich heute, wenn wir über den geistlichen Kampf sprechen, so I want today on the occasion that we are talking about spiritual warfare. You know, now we were talking about what the devil does. But it's spiritual. War is not only our defense. If we say war, then it is also our offensive. After all, we not only need to defend ourselves if we know that. He is amazed, then why don't we step on, step on the devil, demand a return of what is ours. And then this war, this, your war, where you came out victorious to win. You came now with the realization that you are the son of God, the daughter of God, if you look at your problem, where you are not yet free, something you have not yet figured out. Do you look at this rejection, this fear, or this spirit of loneliness, or this? Some kind of incomprehensible depression comes into your life again and again. Or these thoughts of suicide, although there is no reason for you to think about it. They come and come, but you know that you are in a spiritual war. And you know that you are fighting a defeated enemy, and you know that Jesus defeated the devil and gave the victory to you. Therefore, all you need to admit, first of all, all, my friends, I will say a few of these words, and we will pray. Listen. Listen, the first thing you need is to recognize what is in you, no matter what it is, complexes fears, some kind of negative thinking, thoughts of defeat, some bad feelings that come to you. Whoever is presuming this knows what I'm talking about. So for this to happen, you need to admit that. It's not yours. It's not you. Because the devil will always try to paint you as if it were yours. So that you look at yourself in the mirror and think, Bad. That a beautiful girl can look at herself and say I'm terrible, I'll never marry my husband. A strong, smart guy can look at himself and and say, I'm a loser, no one needs me. The devil distorts our image. And you need to be the first to say, this is all, this is not mine, this is what the devil brought into my life, but I am the son of God, I am the daughter of God, and therefore I renounce it. If you see a disease affecting your body, what should you do? The most important thing to say is that it's not mine. Disease is the devil and I am not. I agree with this. I renounce this. If this is a disease of your soul, the same thing. Whatever this may be, I must admit, it's not mine. Everything that makes you feel bad. This is the devil. How to recognize. Every
Everything that makes you feel bad is the devil and your task in this spiritual war is to tell the devil to get out and take everything you have, everything the devil brought, everything you hit me with. You know, you and I are fighting for the souls of people. So interesting, but after fighting for some time, a believer, a man of God, he comes to the conclusion that the devil is defeated in his life. He already knows what to do. He already knows how to fight him. And he understands that now his task fight for others. And therefore, the main thing in spiritual warfare is when we are already fighting for others. When we say the devil doesn't belong to you, these people, the devil does not belong to you, my wife, the devil does not belong to you, my children, my parents. Devil, my friends don't belong to you. Devil, you don't own the people in my country, in my city, in my selka. Devil, I stand against you because I know you are smitten. Because I know what to do with you. I go and destroy your works in prayer, in preaching, we destroy the works of the devil. 